Hi there, welcome to Life Sessions. I am your host, Pastor Stephanie Scragg. It is an honor and a privilege today to get to be with you wherever you are in the world. So today I have in the studio our senior pastor, our founder of Expression Ministries Network, our senior pastor of Expression Church here in Huntington, West Virginia, Pastor Kevin West, as well as Pastor Maria Reynolds. She is a dear friend of ours who has now come into the network over the last year, actually almost two years now coming into it. Um, so glad to have her with us. She is actually the founder of Curator Ministries. That's a connection here within the church. It's an honor and a privilege to have you both in here today. Glad to be here. It's Thank fun. you. We're going to have some fun. Oh, today, you all already know, kind of, if you've been listening, if you've been seeing this, um, whether it be on YouTube, on uh, maybe you're listening to it over the radio station, whatever that might be, uh, you kind of know we have a little bit of a topic, but most of the time we kind of go off topic sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but today, it's just a great honor to get to have them both in here. And today, we're talking specifically about what it looks like to step out in faith, because many of you out there might be listening to this in every walk of life, every single place that you can ever think of um, the one thing that we know we have to have is faith excuse me faith to step out into things even when there's nothing uh, sometimes that's the greatest way to experience the power of God in your life is whenever you don't know what you're stepping out on mm -hmm. um, so today I'm so excited about what God's doing in our lives here at the church but also in you all specifically uh, but today, with Pastor Maria here, I want to just take a moment, just tell people who you are a little bit and where God has kind of got you in life right at this moment and what brought you to this season right now. Yeah, so um, I um, am married, been married uh, 16 years with four beautiful children. Um, I was honored and blessed that my husband allowed me to kind of stay home with the kids and be a stay-at-home mom um, for an extended season of time until so God kind of ushered me into ministry. Um, but, um, I just actually, God launched me out, um, about a, well, about almost a year ago now, um, and just, into just kind of nudged me out into starting my own ministry. I have curator ministries. Mm -hmm. A big nudge. Uh, a, it was a drop kick into the flow, <laughs> um, of that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still, I still work full time mommy. I help my, my husband behind the scenes with running some of our businesses and then I, I do my ministry as well. Yeah. And that's one of the things I'm very thankful uh, to be underneath of the leadership of Pastor Kevin, because one of the things that all three of us kind of have in common that we've not really talked about as much on this show is we all are business owners as well. Mm -hmm. And you've been in business for many years. You have a great background in business ownership, business leading. Mm -hmm. um, and then you and your husband also have multiple things and different uh, networks mm -hmm. that you're out into. Um, so w what is it that God is doing? I know we talked about a little bit um, specifically about what God's doing in your life, but Pastor Kevin, where is it that you're at right now? Because I know we're all stepping out on some big stuff right now. We are stepping out on some big stuff. I don't know where we are right now, to be honest <laughs> with you. I just know we're in between. We're not where we once were. We're not where we're going to end up. So we uh, just keep moving forward. Um, uh, I, I, the Lord is bringing healthy relationships, strengthening current relationships, bringing new ones into place, giving you know more opportunities and greater opportunities, as well as uh, helping us sustain some of our um, businesses and ministries and people and um, operations that we have here at the church. So we're, uh, the Bible says, um, Jesus said we went about doing my father's business. Mm -hmm. So uh, business is not a bad word uh, in, in, the, in the church. Um, in fact, you, you better know how to operate a business in, in the church world or in the ministry world. Um, it's something we can teach our kids. So it's, uh, they need to know how business works. And I, when I mean business, I'm not talking about just your X's and your, your O's and your, your d decimal points. I'm talking about people and when you're talking yeah. about business. So that's what the Lord went around doing, and that's what we do. We found ourselves here, and um, uh, he just keeps giving us vision. And when you're stepping out with one step of the vision, then he will show you more steps, and uh, so it's not, you don't you very rarely get to see how, but you do need to see what. Mm -hmm. So when we see what, we know we keep moving towards the, with the how, and the how moves, it flows, it's ebb and flow. Oh yeah, and the number one thing that always kind of is my because I have conversations with God very often that are just very candid, and especially when I'm in my car. And you just said something. Uh, there's many times that God does not show us the full picture. Mm -hmm. And these are the candid moments that I have with God of like, what are you doing? Can I not see just a little bit more of this thing? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there's there's moments in my life, there's moments I'm, I'm talking to different people where you would love for God to give you a little bit more, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. There's times he does. 
and I'm thankful that um, he, he handles all of his kids the way that we need to be handled. But I'm telling you, there's moments where I step out and there's nothing. And I wish he would give me more. I wish there would be a little bit more of a foundation. You know what I'm talking about? It's just one of those things where it's like, God, could you give me just a little bit more to work on? Well, if you did, you might quit. Yeah. Or run, hide, or try to put your hands on it and make it happen for yourself. That's my tendency. Yeah. So uh, he, he knows what's good for us. I remember when one time Lauren was just a little girl, my daughter, and uh, she's not a little girl anymore. She's a mother and wife and professional and three grandbabies three, yeah three kids so but i remember when she was real little and she was sick and i'd already contacted the doctor and said hey i, I need to have her, her run you know lisa had run and said we gotta get her in there so um i knew he was giving her a shot but i wasn't gonna tell her because i knew she wouldn't want to go right so i got her in the car and i said we're going to the doctor knowing good and well i knew the outcome uh but she didn't my goal was to get her better so she trusted that i knew that i was going to get her better that was my goal but she certainly wouldn't have probably been for the, the journey to get there. Uh, but she wanted to get well. So we got to the doctor, and I held on to her. And I'll never forget her looking up at me going, you are holding the one I trust the most in this world, you and Mom. I'm looking at you, and you're, 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 you're holding me down for this doctor to inflict this shot in me, this needle in my butt, just to get this thing going. And uh, <laughs> I laughed out loud. I said to myself, I thought, gosh, she's trusting me. I feel like I'm betraying her, but I knew holding it. And I feel like God does that with us sometimes because he knows the end result is so much better for us. And uh, if we'll just trust him, even in the bumps and the, in the journey, uh, things look like setbacks, seems the, the pain sometimes it feels. Oh, yeah. But um, I'm glad he don't tell me every bit of the pain that's coming up because I, I, would, I would worry about it. <laughs> well, too, and sometimes what I have learned is that if God gave me the full picture, especially when it comes to failure, if God yeah. would show me in the beginning that this wasn't, I was going to miss this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I would miss something in the middle that, that was so more, much more valuable than what I was going to thought I was going to acquire. I remember a season in my marriage where my husband and I were believing God for something. We stepped out literally into nothing um, and just and, and was believing, thought, really thought that God was moving against in, in a direction for a position change uh, for him and um, fell short and he didn't get it. And it was a devastating moment in our, in our, in our marriage. Um, then fast forward to six months later, my grandmother died, who was my matriarch. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking if he would have gotten that position, he couldn't have been there for me the, the way I needed him in that season. And it would have affected our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had, if we knew he was going to fail, he would never stepped out. Yeah. So if God had shown us the whole picture, he, he couldn't have worked it out in the end. And let my husband be that the husband to me that he needed to be. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because I'm telling you, it's that very thing. Whenever, if you knew that you were going to fail, if you already knew the hardship, and those are those things, but that's what that scripture talks about is in those uh, progressions of life, that's whenever hope turns into patience, those mm -hmm. different things. It's a progression. And many times we, we're very, very uh, a s small thinking sometimes of instant gratification. This is what I'm feeling right now. And mm -hmm. I know for me, I am. Um, there's those moments where, like you said, if I knew that I was going to fail in this part, um, but here's the cool thing I love about the scripture that talks about he is changing us and transforming us from glory to glory. That's one thing, but it's also something from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Cause if I'm thinking glory to glory, I'm like, oh, that's great. But the only way to build strength is through maxing things out, mm -hmm. going till failure, going to that point of just pain. And that's hard, just like with Lauren. <laughs> well, there's no crown. There's no crown without a cross. It's just impossible. Yeah. Um, there's not the pattern to the scriptures is clear, um, and that's the way life is. Life's a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're, it's up and down. Even when you're down and you're on the, you seem like you're at the, the bottom end at times. It's not the end, yeah. uh, because you, you it only lasts for a season. Um, I've, I'm learning. I haven't got this down yet, but I'm learning to extract. The, the blessing or the, the the teaching or the learning I'm supposed to get um, from every season we're in. Yeah. So when we're on top, then extract all what, what that means and, and absorb it. Get it all inside of you because you might need that when you go to the next season when it's not maybe on top. And then you extract all the other stuff and uh, you just do. You just, you're always looking because the Lord is leading and guiding us. And we believe that. That's the truth. Everybody in the scripture from Abraham all the way through David, um, through, 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 through Jesus, it, it, there's always it's always a journey, and uh, you, you can't take a snapshot and then and make it the end portrait. The snapshot is just a, where you are in the journey. This thing's not a, a sprint. It's made of several sprints, but it's not a sprint. It is certainly a marathon. Oh yeah. 
What's funny is that, is that I say this. It's like, you know, either we're going to take this chance. You're going to succeed or you're yeah. going to fail quick, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. If you fail, let it hurt yeah. and then let it go and move on. Right. But yeah. that, that reminded me when you were talking Extract about that. Extract that because the, even the failure is not failure unless you just stop there. Right. Yeah. If you, if you pull out those things. I mean, um, every, every great team that ever has ever played, um, I mean, think about it. There's, there's all these NFL teams on, in National Football League. There's only one winner every year. Right. But n- none of them fold up their team. Mm-hmm. Nobody, oh, I'm closing up shop here because of we didn't win this year. No, you regroup, you refocus, you learn what you need to learn in the season that you're in, and then you work in the off season for the things you need to work on, and then you start all over again next year for the competition for the next season. It is a rebuilding season. It is, yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's a, it, it, it's a part of just being okay with mm-hmm. being a block. Yeah. You're not going to be the man on top. Maybe you're the one that needed to come up underneath, and you have to be okay with that oh, role because yeah. you're not oh, always yeah. going to be the one on top. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You have to be okay with that. And there's moments and seasons where God redefines who you are in seasons mm-hmm. because I know within myself personally, um, I find myself transitioning in from one season into the next, and then suddenly I have a new identity in that season. Mm-hmm. And suddenly I was one thing in one season. I want to talk about that after the break too, about how God moves us because I know we've all three experienced that is we're in one season and then suddenly mm-hmm. we come into a new one. And sometimes it's hard because you still see yourself in a previous season, but God's elevating you. Mm-hmm. He's promoting you, promotions of the Lord. And we've all experienced it. I want to talk about that some more. Again, I want to thank you guys for listening, for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and tell your friends about it because these sessions are basically for um, living everyday life. And I want to tell you about a couple things, though, if you'd like more resources, anything at all. We've got a couple websites that you can go to, expchurch.org. You can see our services live, download our products. Then also, kevinwest.org. It's a great place to go check out Pastor Kevin's latest book, Angel and Isle 3. Great read such a wonderful testimony. We're going to talk about seasons and this is part of that and how to step out into faith. Uh, But make sure you check that out. Get our free app on your phone. All you do is go to Google Play or the iTunes store and you can download our app for free. Watch our services live. You can also download all of this content, all these sessions on that app. So you've been listening to live sessions and we are so excited. We're going to come back shortly and wherever you are in the world, Um, I know we kind of go across all different lines and nationalities. I just want you to be encouraged. That's what these are all about, is making sure that you're living the life that God's called you to in your everyday real life. So we will be back with more Life Sessions. We hope that today's ministry has been a blessing to you so far. I speak on behalf of Pastor Kevin West and Expression Church when I say it's an honor and a privilege to get to minister all across the world. The only way that we can reach the world is through people helping financially sowing into the ministry. People just like yourself who have been blessed and are truly feeding from this ministry. So if you feel like that's you today and you'd like to join in and begin to sow so that the message of the kingdom of God can spread into all areas of the nations, I encourage you today, visit expchurch.org, click on the word give, or you can also text give by sending a message to the number 84321 and the text giving amount. We hope again that you have been blessed by this ministry and that you will experience the expression of Jesus Christ in your everyday real life. Hi there and welcome back to Live Sessions. I am your host, Pastor Stephanie Scragg. In the studio today, Pastor Kevin West, as well as Pastor Maria Reynolds. Um, It's wonderful to have you here today. First time on the show, Pastor Kevin is our senior pastor at Expression Church in Huntington, West Virginia. We're talking about stepping out in faith. Very hot topic in the body of Christ as far as we hear the word faith a lot. But before the break, we were specifically discussing about how we, you know, you move out into different areas, how God doesn't necessarily show you everything that you're going to be stepping out into. But that's because many times we might not even make those steps. If we're not careful, we'll hold ourselves back if we knew. So he kind of holds some things away from us. But the thing we were talking about that I want to pick up on is how in every season, of course, we know he's faithful, but there's moments in our life whenever we go from one season, from one glory to glory, from one strength, we walk through the process that God is changing our identity in those things and how we viewed ourselves in one season, it changes. Mm -hmm. And I know all three of us have experienced that in our own separate way. I know you specifically experienced that 
even in our beginning our church and our whole oh, yeah. network. Well, as a man thinketh in his heart, he is. Yeah. Okay, that's a scripture. Moses, just use him for example. Moses was a guy that was raised in Egypt and um, got upset, got mad because people were, you know, mistreating some of his his uh, fellow brethren. Uh, and he, you know, kills a man. Mm -hmm. And then he flees. And he's gone because they were coming, you know, kind of persecuting him a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. saying, are you the guy that did that? And thought he was going to be found out. So he leaves. He goes into another city or another region of, t of territory, and time goes on, mm -hmm. right? He ages, he matures, but the thing that didn't mature him, what didn't happen in him is he had completely lost his identity from his that season he was in previously, okay? Back in when he was a, you know, a guy that killed a man. God raises him up and says, hey, Moses, you're going to have to go back to the, the city of to, to Egypt or go back to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Moses looks at God and says, I... Do you realize who I am? Yeah. Moses had an identity crisis at that point because Moses felt in, in, in insecure, inferior, uh, inadequate. He knew all his shortcomings and flaws. He was thinking through himself through the eyes of the people that he ran from. Yeah. So when he began to see that, so God says, no, uh, you're the guy. So what the biggest adjustment Moses had to make during that season was walking in who you are now, yeah. not where you, who you were. It's the, the, the journey we all must make. It was one of the hardest things I had to adjust here because you know, I'm the senior pastor of the church and people look at me for decisions and you know affirmation. And to me, I still hadn't, affir hadn't even understood the fact that I, that affirmation meant something to somebody. Yeah. And to me, I thought, oh, hey, that's a pretty good job. And they were disappointed because I didn't, I didn't think my, my opinion mattered that much mm -hmm. because, you know, where I came from, it didn't matter a whole lot then. So you have to come to the next place. Mm -hmm. So here I am having to walk into this thing and become confident in the role that you're in. Yeah. And that becomes, uh, that's true humility. Humility is proper assessment of the proper season, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have a proper assessment of yourself in the season that you're in, the proper season you're in, yeah. and they are in sync and work together that's true humility, seeing it the way it was. Jesus did it when Jesus came, mm -hmm. and uh, Jesus says, "Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't find it. I don't find it, e you know, robbery. robbery to be equal with, with with God." Yeah, and they're going, "What are you talking about? How in the world can you say this?" And that we're going to stone him for it. Yeah. So Jesus had no problem doing that. It wasn't even the works that he did; it was who he said he was. Right, and he even quoted scripture from Moses to verify what they were saying, even from David. He even quoted some, some psalms from David in Psalm 82. Mm -hmm. So it went on and on and on, that whole passage of Scripture. We have the same problem today. I do. I, I, it's, I think it's fun that we all face, and that is God sees you a certain way. People around you see you closer to God the way God sees you than you see yourself. Yeah. And the quicker we can make the adjustment in our mind that, okay, God, you say this about me. The people are actually saying this about me. And I probably need to begin to believe this about myself, too. And that confidence starts rising up, and the anointing will flow from that confidence. Oh, yeah. And you're experiencing a little bit of that, too, now. I know and your your journey into ministry has been one at, like, 100 miles an hour. Well, it really has. Yeah, so you really did drop kick me into the flow. Um, and I, I, I like what you said about humility. And one thing that God has taught me through, through the different seasons of my life, but most specifically, there was a, a point that I had the opposite happen to me where you felt like you were elevated and people looked to you for um, guidance and, and, and affirmation. There was a season in my life where um, the, the, the opposite happened. So we were walking through a season where, you know, it, it, it was it was with my husband and, and he um, would would come and, 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 and need those things from me. And there was a point in time when God elevated him. Yeah. And I did not fully understand that when God elevates my head, I have to elevate with him and my role changes. And I didn't understand that. And so at one point, God had to deal with me about my humility because it's, it's thy will, not my will be done. I still needed my husband to need me in this way, the way he needed me in this season. But we were in a new season and he needed me differently. Mm -hmm. And I needed to stretch myself and be OK with where God needed me to be for him there. He, need, he didn't need he needed a he need, didn't need a soundboard anymore. He needed a safety net, and I needed to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, and that was an identity crisis yeah. um, because I was used to being this for him, and now I was shifting to this. And and it was it was hard. It was a hard stretch. Yeah, your kids you need you to be that too. One hundred percent. I yeah. think my relationship I know with my mother um, has changed. I mean, whenever I'm younger, it was one thing, but now it's something different. Mm -hmm. So we do. That's part of who we are is a redefining. Um, that takes a lot of faith to do, though, mm -hmm. because you're basically being shaped and formed and repottered, and there's many facets, and it's very difficult. Um, it's painful, 
And again, it's one of those things where it causes some fear. It causes a little bit of pullback. Um, everybody goes through it. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those natural things that happen. And, and what you were talking about with, uh, with Moses, going back into, because here's the thing that he also did, and I don't find in the scripture where he had a speech impediment until that moment mm -hmm. that he says, I can't speak well. All of a sudden, new problems show up because mm -hmm. nobody, the scripture doesn't say anything that he had a speech problem in Egypt. It suddenly turns up and you all of a sudden have these things that hinder you in a new season and you're like yeah. where'd that come from well you put yourself under the microscope of, of, of that that sees your flaws yeah and they weren't there aren't flaws to god god uses those flaws because it's, it's in our weakness god's strength is made perfect yeah. right so what happens is we begin to put ourselves under the microscope we know ourselves better than anybody mm -hmm. and we begin to we have a tendency to look at ourselves with all the things that are wrong with us and mm -hmm. all of our shortcomings and surely God couldn't use the shortcomings, but it's been my experience over the years. And I, I almost hate to admit this is that it's not my strength that God uses. He does, but it's not as much as my strength. He's, he's used my weaknesses as much as he uses my strengths mm -hmm. because there's a time there was a, a, a couple that had had some marital problems. And I sat down and wrote a guy a letter one time because it was long distance a relationship we had with the family. And, I said I wrote a letter and I misspelled a word and I scratched out the word and um, mailed the letter. I read a, wrote a blistering letter to him, you know, about Jonah and the well and all <laughs> these different things. And I sent it to him. He got it, he got the letter out and he read it. I heard about it a few weeks later. He read it. it. It pricked his heart. He cried and repented. His wife and him got back together. Um, and I saw him much yeah. time later and I said, hey, what happened? Uh, he says, all these legs. I got your letter. He said, it just tore me up. I said, what part of the letter tore you up? And he said... Uh, I said, was there was the screening scripture particular or anything about the story or what which, which was it? He goes, you know, you wrote a word in there. Grace was the word and you wrote it and you marked it out and just kept right on going. And he said, and I never, when I read that, saw that word grace and it was marked out, I realized the Lord spoke to him and says, Chris, things don't have to be perfect. And he said, and I broke. And he said, when I broke, I went home and I repented and I told my wife, we got to work this out. And he said, the, the rest of the letter was pretty good too. But it was the mistake that I made in the letter that the Lord used. It wasn't even all my great articulation and my great you know, uh, words of encouragement and all of that. It wasn't that. He used that mistake. And I learned at that point, God will use it, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. We've got to be ready to yield that to him. Absolutely. Um, I've also learned that God will use your mistakes for you, but the enemy will use them against you. Mm -hmm. yep. So for me, I don't, I'm, I'm a pretty bold person. I don't really have a hard time stepping out in faith and trying new things. It's staying out that I have a hard time with. Because when I get out into the flow of things or get out to where God's calling me to, that's when the enemy pops up all my insecurities and all my shortcomings. And he just hammers me with it. Because yeah. it's easier than to do a retreat to a place of safety, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a place that I'm familiar with and that I know. Um, but man, staying out sometimes is hard when you have to wrestle those, you know, those insecurities to the ground. Oh my goodness. Yes. And many times those are the very things, um, because I've heard this said so many times, I, I don't really have issues now where I'm having to constantly just cast out demons out of my path and mm -hmm. all this stuff. My problems between my ears, mm -hmm. many times it's, I won't step out. I won't find myself going out from, from my, this is my perspective. I want to know 10 steps. I want to know exactly what I'm getting ready to get myself into and I want to know. And then I also know, um, I, for instance, um, I'm also a worship leader here at our church. And I was writing songs. The this biggest song that I wrote was eight years ago. And that was my thing. And then all of a sudden, um, it dried up. And it was like suddenly I wasn't writing anything. Now, I was stepping out into other areas and everything. But that was one area where I kind of retreated in because I felt like, you know what? Nothing I write is going to be as good as that. Mm -hmm. Nothing I write. I mean, because I would sing something and be like, well, I don't like that. I don't want, I don't want to put that out there because people already know this is what I'm capable of. So I'm not about to go out there with anything less than, so I'm just going to keep all that to myself. And the Holy Spirit began to prick my heart. And, t and it was that same thing of, okay, here's the deal. You might have been known in this season as this. I need you to step out and trust me that when I bring you into a brand new season, I, wa I was never gracing you to go back into that season. Mm -hmm. I'm gracing you to go into a larger season. And this is the cool thing about the story with Moses. He didn't go alone. No. He took his brother with him. And his brother was then elevated alongside of him in this new season. So for my life now, especially in music and in creativity, it's no longer just about, 
I have a mark to hit for myself. It's now a mark that I have with many other people and an anointing. And what's cool is whenever I finally began to realize those things, I started putting some songs out, started writing again. The, the brook started going mm-hmm. again. Um, but in maturity, recognizing that we're not the only ones that step out in faith. We're doing it for generations behind us. Mm-hmm. I know you both. Well, it's, it's critical for us when it's a critical for us to step out into a place that we don't know where we're going. Yep. Not 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 just foolishness, but I am talking about a risk when you know the Lord is you know, kind of nudging you to take that risk. You take the risk. You have to begin to see yourself, your self image. Your own image has to be the image that He sees when, in that season that you're in after you take that risk. The reason you do that is two reasons. Number one. Your confidence flows out of that when you begin to see yourself as he sees you. Right. And number two, other people around that you're influencing and leading or indirectly or directly begin to uh, have the a privilege of coming into where they see themselves yes. that way. It's not about you. It's not about how getting people to see you the way you want them to see you. It's about how getting yourself to you to see how God sees you so other people can be elevated to the place where they can step out and risk and go through the same transformation. It's glory to glory, strength to strength, faith to faith. Mm -hmm. It is really going and growing from season to season where God begins to unveil who he really called you to be for the season that you are. And as you see him, you see you, and then together you co-labor and sojourn through this whole thing we call life. Oh, yeah. And it's important that you see yourself as a as a team player, yes. right? My, I, I, when you were saying that, I remember there was an instance my son uh, had just played a basketball game, and my, my brother came down, my bro- older brother Rick, um, and his team was, was, was not doing well, and, and my son um, wouldn't shoot the ball. He kept getting the ball, and he, would just, he wouldn't shoot the ball. And I remember my, my brother walking my son to the car and saying, you know, buddy, here's the thing. He said, shooting the ball is intimidating, but it's necessary. He said, "You will never look back ten years from now, and look at the shot that you missed. Even if you, even if you, even if you shot it and missed, and people made fun of you, you'll never remember that. You'll always remember the shot you didn't take. You mm-hmm. always got to take your shot. And it's important because he was he was part of a team, and the team was suffering because of his insecurity. Oh yeah, and it's hard. That's a huge issue as far as I mean. Whenever you recognize that this isn't just about you now, because that's whenever the pressure gets on." Mm-hmm is when now you're responsible for many around you. And that's true in a family. It's true on a basketball team. That's true in a business, a church. We're, we, we learn that every single day of there are other people waiting on you to take that step. Oh, yeah. And there are people that would never be here had you not taken that step. Jesus said it well. I'm leaving. They were devastated when he said, I got to go. And he looked at them right in the face and, and, and square in the eye. And he said, it's necessary that I go because I'm going to go prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. When we go, when we step forward, when we take the risk, when we launch out, whatever you want to call that journey, we have to, because we're preparing a place or a setting for other people to come. And then we all get to do life together. Oh, yes. And that's the hardest thing is he does call us to be like Christ. Those are those moments. We, We take on the embodiment of who he is. We take on his character and his nature. That's a big part of it, mm-hmm. is you're called to go create things for people to step out in with you. Well, we are all, we're out of time today. I love this topic. This is one of those that we could go on for a long time. I want to thank both of you guys so much for being a part of this. It's always a pleasure just to get to talk about these things. Wherever you are in the world today, I hope that you're encouraged. Take that step. Come on, do something. Get out of your comfort zone. And like he said, it's not about being reckless. It's about being faith-filled. And it's knowing that it's not our faith, it's his faith. It's jumping out on what Jesus says. I want to encourage you, if you're local and you're watching this maybe in the States, um, here in West Virginia, come visit us, 115 Cheshire Way. Services are 11 a.m. as well as Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Remember to visit our websites, kevinwest.org, as well as expchurch.org. You can download all kinds of different products there that will be an encouragement to your life. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is where these are all posted. We have many different guests going to be coming over over the next few weeks. Also, go on Facebook and check out Curator Ministries. Um, Each Monday morning, there is an amazing sermon on there that basically kind of tells stories from just life and then extracts the Word of God from that even more. Um, Today, be encouraged, be blessed, and be faith-filled because God has got some incredible plans for your life. 
And so just wherever you are in this world, and maybe if you're not local, get involved in a body somewhere. Get involved in a church because the church needs you. God needs you to be all you are. Again, thank you so much for listening to Life Sessions.